my name is Mark Sign. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and I would like to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, January the 29th. We'll be singing several songs from Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, I will give you the number and the name of the song, just in case you don't have that book, that you can uh, find it in your book or Google it, so that you can uh, be involved in the song service. We'll also have uh, an observance of the Lord's Supper and a message that I hope will be enlightening and beneficial to all of us. So if you would turn your song books to number 202, the title of this song is Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number 202. <clears throat> Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus, which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us, brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. If you return to number 185, Jesus, thy name I love. 185. <clears throat> Jesus, thy name I love. Jesus, thy name I love, all other names above. Jesus, my Lord, oh, thou art all to me, nothing to please I see. Nothing apart from thee, Jesus, my Lord, thou blessed Son of God, hast brought me with thy blood, Jesus. My Lord, how might 
King is thy love. All other loves above. Love that I daily prove. Jesus, my Lord. So shall be happy then, Jesus my Lord, then thine own face I'll see, then I shall like thee be, then Before we sing the Lord's Supper, let's turn to number 705, 705, A Common Love. Seven oh five, A Common Love. <clears throat> a common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's Word. At this time, we gather around the Lord's table, and the title of our song uh, kind of wraps up uh, what this is all about. It's a common love. It's a common love that we do indeed have uh, for the Savior. It's a common love that uh, holds us to the Lord. It's a common love that binds us to our God through the sacrifice that uh, his son made for our sins. And so as we gather about the table, uh, we think of that common love. We think of the love that God had for us by sending his son. We think of the love that Jesus had for us by uh, being willing to give himself up that we might live, that he might be willing to allow his body to be tortured and his blood to be shed, that we might be drawn closer to the Father. So as we partake of the bread, the symbol of his body, as we partake of the fruit of the vine, the symbol of his blood, let's remember that common love. Let's pray for the bread. Our Lord, we just thank you so much for your divine plan that Jesus would come to earth, would be the master teacher, but would also be the sacrifice uh, once and for all for each of us. Help us to remember that he hung on the cross, that his body was given in our stead, and as we would take of this bread, help us to remember that body on the cross. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. Let's pray for the fruit of the vine. As we offer this prayer to you, we see the blood flowing from Jesus' head, from his hands, from his feet, from his side. We see the agony that he was in, and we see that he did this all for you and I. Help us to personalize this and make it such that uh, Jesus died for me. And uh, I just pray that uh, you will bless us as we remember, as we remember the common love that he had for us that we would also have that common love for you. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.
Having completed the Lord's Supper, we also, uh, on the first day of the week, are commanded to lay by and store that with which we have been prospered. Help us to understand the great opportunity that we have to further uh, the Lord's work uh, here in this area through the giving of our money, that uh, uh, the stewards of this money will use it in such a way that the gospel will be spread, that the needy will be helped. Let's pray for the giving. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to have a, a thanksgiving for all that you have given to us. Help us to give thanks also and give so with gratitude. Help us to give back to you cheerfully as you have stated to us that you love a cheerful giver. Help us that we do lay by in store. Help us to take the money that we have and return it to you because it came from you anyway. Bless us in our giving. I pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing is number 779. I love you, Lord. 779, we'll sing it through twice. Seven seventy nine. I love you, Lord. <clears throat> I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. In what you hear, may it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. That concludes our song service. I know that the Lord was praised. I hope that uh, your spirits were lifted in uh, praising the Lord who uh, demands that praise and uh, that uh, every time we lift our voices to him that uh, we'll remember that we have a God that is worthy of our praise. Uh, if you were at services this morning, uh, you heard that the title of our lesson this evening would be uh, the passionate pursuit of God. Boy, those are those are uh, uh, full words, aren't they? Look at look at those. Passionate pursuit. In this case, passionate pursuit of God. We pursue many things in our lives. Uh, we pursue good health. Uh, we pursue uh, a way to feed our families. We pursue ways to stay comfortable in our lives. We pursue, pursue ways to help others. But we are going to get to the very, very center and the very, very crux of our pursuit this evening as we think of the passionate pursuit of God. If we turn to Psalm chapter 84, Psalm 84, and look at verses 1 to 2. I think this will uh, provide a springboard for us to understand what uh, I mean this evening when I talk about a passionate pursuit of God. The writer writes, How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Are those passionate words or what? 
how passionate those words are. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. That's so passionate. And so as we think of our passionate pursuit for the Lord, let's think of those verses. Mark them. Psalm chapter 84, verses 1 and 2. You know, when we think about, our, about what our relationship with God is all about, let's look at it this way. God should not just be our highest priority, but also our most fervent passion, our most fervent passion. Now, of course, we do make God our first priority, but we do we do it passionately? Do we do it fervently? Love and desire for him should just stir within the depths of us so so deeply that we seek him no matter what the cost we are to seek him we are to seek him because he is our lord and our god we should seek him with fervence and seek him with passion if indeed god is our creator and he is, no less of us is required. God's our creator. And in that, we are required to pursue him with fervence and with passion. It, it would be perhaps the greatest folly imaginable to re treat God as one of our peripheral, uh, one of our peripheral interests. You know, I'm interested in a sport. I'm interested in reading books. I'm interested in politics. I'm interested in keeping up what's going on today. I'm interested in God. Whoa. See, God's not just on the periphery. God's not just one of those things that we should be interested in. God is what should we should be passionately and fervently pursuing with, with every fiber of our existence. Some years ago, a theologian described religion this way. He said religion is a person's ultimate concern a person's ultimate concern. Do you agree with that? I do. But as the old commercial says, there's more. While this is true in a, in a certain sense, the concept of ultimate concern may just be misleading if we're not careful. Ultimate concern, um, uh, those may be equal uh, to that which everybody has. And if that's the truth, they're not equal either in validity or equal in value. You see, we have a periphery of things that we are interested in. However, our ultimate concern, that which we pursue with passion and fervence, has to be our God. To be of true value, ultimate concern needs to be aligned with ultimate reality. Concern and reality. Concern, what we are passionate about. Reality, what we do about that. If we're passionate about God, we should passionately pursue him. But more to the point, not everyone's, I guess, ultimate concern is equally strong. 
You know, <laughs> we are such buried people. If I took a straw poll of all of you that are listening to me, I would, I could probably ask you the question, what are some of the things that you are concerned about? We, we all have some things that we care about more than anything else. Do we care about the people that we love? If we are married, do we care very much about our spouse? We all have something that we care about. Um, but you know what? We don't always give, I guess, equal passion to our priorities, even the highest ones. If I love to watch some show on TV, that that's cool. That's okay. And if, and if this show comes on once a week or, or what, however it comes on, I can look forward to that time. But how passionately do I pursue that? Some people don't really pursue anything with passion. However, here's the crux of my message this evening. When it comes to God, can any of us truly say that we pursue him as passionately as we ought to? That's a burning question. That, that question should burn within us. Do we pursue our God with the fervor and the passion that we should pursue him with? that we should passionately uh, be have as our ultimate concern. To put it really bluntly, on many levels, our present spiritual condition is a weak one. And what we are all about in our lives, I believe, is overcoming our weakness. How do we overcome our weakness. Well, I would subscribe that it takes two things. It takes passion and it takes dedication. Those two things. If we are truly concerned about overcoming that which is weak in our life, we should pursue that which is strong with, with both passion and with focus and with dedication. There is an artist by the name of Thomas Kincaid. He has been dubbed, quote, the painter of light. And he said this, artists often are, are kind of deep thinking people. And, and I want to make sure you get this because as I, as I read this quote of his, I said, boy, this is a smart guy. He said, you don't get in physical shape by wishing you were a better athlete. For example, if I watch great athletes on TV, it won't make me a greater athlete. It won't put me in any greater condition. Now here's, here's where Kincaid really hit it. He said, and you don't get in better spiritual condition by harboring some vague spiritual yearnings. Do you get that? Vague spiritual yearnings. What do I mean by that? It's just like watching the TV and watching athletes. I don't become a greater athlete by watching them. And I don't become spiritually stronger by just thinking about being and becoming spiritually stronger. Now in the Beatitudes, uh, from the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus pointed this out succinctly. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, these are Jesus' words. Blessed are those that hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Hunger 
and thirst for righteousness. Not say, yeah, 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 I want to be righteous, okay. No. Those that will be filled are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness. A couple of verses later, in Matthew uh, 5, uh, verse 8, he said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Not blessed are those that say, yeah, yeah, there's a God. And, you know, if I think about it a little bit, maybe I'll, I'll pursue God. No, no. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And so those who will be filled will be those who hunger and thirst. Now, those who hunger and thirst, hunger and thirst in such a way that what they're looking for is the most important thing that's out there. Those who hunger are those who long for him with passion. We may even call it determination, something that will not and cannot be denied. The only way we can pursue God is to pursue him with passion, to hunger and thirst after him with determination. For, for many of us, uh, what do we consider right relationships with anyone? How do I develop a relationship with someone I love? You do so with passion. You, you pursue that. And how much more important is God in our lives? For many of us, a right relationship with God as is hopefully seen as an important part of the good life which every well-rounded Christian ought to be living and which every uh, Christian ought to be willing to address. But it's not the whole of things. That's not what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, it has to be more than just a vital interest. Now you'll say, whoa, whoa, what can be more important than a vital interest? It must become the reigning passion of our existence. Going back to my title, the reigning passion is all about a passionate pursuit of God. It's that which truly hungry people can think of as food. The hungry person will only be satiated by getting food. The person that wants to meet God the way God ought to be met is the person that is passionately and fervently pursuing him. I hope that this message got home this evening. A passionate pursuit of our God. As we know, we live such unique and interesting lives and there are so many things that enter into our lives that, that we busy ourselves with. But our ultimate busyness, what is ultimate for us, is that we have the proper, the exact proper relationship with our God. And the only way that we can do that is to have a passionate pursuit. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. 
That's hungering and thirsting. That's trying to make our heart as pure as we possibly can if we want to see God. It all starts with acceptance of God and then his son as his son indeed. It starts with us confessing that Jesus is indeed the son of God. It starts with that and saying that this is so important to me that I want to get rid of all the baggage in my life. I'm interested in passionately pursuing my God and then obeying him with the obedience of baptism. Yes, this is the invitation. It's the invitation to start our life in Jesus Christ. And when we do that, we will hopefully, that will lead to a passionate pursuit of God. If you need to come to Christ and to our God this evening, uh, this is the time. We are here and ready. You have but to contact us and we will be at your beck and call. Let's close this service with a prayer. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the time that we've had together this evening to, to just touch on a part of your word. There's so many things that we can look at in your word that are important to us. But as, as I look at the lesson this evening, it is making God the top priority in our life to be a passionate in our pursuit of him, to hunger and thirst after him. Only when we do that can we get in the relationship with God that we need to. I pray that you would continue to be in our lives daily as we make you our top priority, that that uh, we would just uh, have you in, in all the things that we say and all the things that we do, that we people will know that we're Christians, not just because of uh, what we say we are, but by the things that we do. Continue to bless us and be with us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. I pray that all of you are safe and may God bless you.